in full disclosure for this video, I'm not going to actually do any work. I'm going to show you all the things I did um, that were right and wrong to fix the P0171 error. And um, this way, I think it'll at least help everyone to diagnose their own problems because uh, I went through quite a few different um, processes to try to fix this problem. So the P0171 sorry, P0171 error code is not specific to a Toyota. However, this is a 2007 Toyota Camry. Uh, that is a generic code, which really means uh, it's a, a lean fuel mixture. Um, and mine pointed out bank one, sensor one. Um, so a little brief intro on that. So this is a four cylinder transverse engine. So I'm gonna have only uh, one bank right here. So you can see the oxygen sensor that I'm pointing at. Uh, bank one, sensor one. Uh, there is a bank two, which is an oxygen sensor behind the catalytic converter, which I won't be talking about because I didn't change any of that. Um, and that didn't affect the P0171 error code. So um, the first thing that I did was um, get the reader, obviously, and, and checked out that error code and did a little bit of research. And uh, I wanted to at least start with the, the basic and cheap uh, things to work on first as any good DIYer would probably do. So the first thing I did was looked at the PCV valve. The PCV valve in my car is underneath this plastic cover which I'm not going to take off because it's, it's just sitting right here um, but essentially it's here's an old PCV valve the one I took off it sits right there underneath the plastic cover. Uh, when I took that off um, I started with that because it's a four dollar part so I just Took this, took this off, and when I was taking that off, um, unfortunately the hose that you see right here, when I took it off, it snapped because it was brittle. So the hose went like that. This was attached to the PCB valve, and you can see it just sort of snapped off right there. So I thought, I thought, oh good, either the PCB valve was bad, or this hose had some sort of vacuum leak because it was old and brittle and that was causing the problem. Um, so after replacing that and the hose, I cleared the code with my reader. I drove probably about 50 miles or so, multiple days, multiple cycles, trying to make sure that that engine, check engine light didn't come back on. It did come back on. Um, so after, uh, you know, I made sure it was the same error code, and sure enough it was, exact same uh, bank one, sensor one, P0171. The next step that I did was I cleaned out the um, air intake and I replaced the mass airflow sensor. Uh, it's a pretty basic repair. This is the old one. Um, I replaced it with the, a Denso, which is what the original was, but it's really just two screws and then this plug. Um, I, I did test it using uh, a probe, uh, but I wasn't totally sure if it was giving me good readings or not. So. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's, this for my car is a $70 part from, from Rock Out if you went to somewhere else, it's a little bit more. But after taking out those two screws, uh, plugging the new one in there, putting that back in there, and then again, cleaning it out, make sure there's no leaves or debris in there, uh, I then cleared the code again uh, with my reader. I drove another 50, 60 miles, multiple days, multiple cycles, and then the engine light, check engine light came back on again. So after doing the PCV valve, the mass airflow sensor, my next guess was the oxygen sensor up front. Um, so this is what an oxygen sensor, this is the old one, that goes into, this piece goes right into here. I took this shield off just to make it a little bit easier to work on, just a couple of bolts, didn't really need to, but um, you need to get the, uh, special ratchet that has a keyway so you can get the wire through it but just loosen that up and then that connects right up through into here and that connector piece is just just one of these so you just basically squeeze it and take it off there um, for this car um, this sensor was a hundred dollars from rock auto again i um, cleared the code with my reader drove it around, and this time I was able to go about 100 miles, multiple days, again, multiple cycles, 
and I thought for sure, okay, that must have been the problem um, since the light didn't come on. But then, sure enough, the light came back on. So after spending, uh, you know, about $180 approximately, um, I was kind of frustrated and it had been almost a month with all the various, uh, you know, driving it multiple days, changing one thing, driving it again. I decided to talk to uh, a friend in the neighborhood um, and he actually works at a dealership. So uh, I said, you know, told him everything I did. Um, he drove it for a couple days and since um, he noticed, um, he noticed that it was a little bit sluggish going from, you know, first gear to second gear to third gear, just a little bit. Now I bought this used. Um, I wasn't totally aware of all the little intricacies of what I'm working on um, with the car being, you know, if it's a little bit, a little bit sluggish. I thought maybe that was just sort of normal for this four cylinder car. However, um, with that sluggishness that he noticed, he thought it could be the fuel pump, which I thought it might be as well, but since that one is a little bit more involved and cost even more money, I was sort of holding off on that. Uh, since he has worked at the dealership, he had a little bit more experience with that than I did. Um, I let him go ahead and do that. So in this car, the fuel pump is located uh, underneath the back seat. So this whole back seat has to come out. Uh, basically, there's just a couple of snaps on the on the front there. It comes up, then the fuel pump is located right in the middle. Um, where the, you know, in the fuel tank. He did some testing on that and he saw that the uh, fuel pump was reading about 25 to 20 PSI when it should have been reading 44. So the pressure sending the fuel to the, to the engine. So with that information, he went ahead and replaced the fuel pump and he, would, he then drove it a couple times, uh, drove it through some cycles and sure enough, the light turned off by itself. So. Um, and now it's been even more. It's been probably a couple hundred more mi more miles, multiple days, multiple cycles, and the light is off. It has stayed off. Um, so I'm confident that this is now the problem. Um, so a couple of lessons learned is that each time I fixed something or replaced it, you know, the PCV valve, the MAP sensor, the oxygen sensor, um, I manually turned off the light because I'm sort of impatient. Want to make sure it's uh, fixed. In this case, it would have been better for me not to have manually turned it off because then I would have known that that wasn't the problem um, instead of wasting you know days trying to figure it out. Um, so that's that's one lesson learned. However, you know replacing these things, it's it's sort of a good little tune-up. Uh, it's got 140,000 miles on it, so the oxygen sensor, you know, it, maybe it was going to fail eventually. You know, it's not looking too great, but um, and the PCV valve is only four dollars and. And the hose actually was was brittle, so that may have developed a, a problem at any moment. So it's not wrong that I did those things. A little bit unnecessary in some cases, but um, definitely there's no problem in doing that. And they're all very easy things to do. Um, so a little bit of tune-up. Um, and if I had someone else, if I had brought it to a, a shop or a dealer for them to look at it, you know, they may have started with these things. Who knows? It would have cost a lot more money than just me doing it. Um, another thing was um, when I uh, just make sure that you clean that out as well. The other thing is when you're looking, um, make sure that there's no air holes or cracks in hoses. I didn't have any, but that could be another source of problem, which is another reason I took it to my friend because I thought he might be able to do a, a smoke test when I don't have uh, the ability to do the smoke test here. So. Um, but we didn't need to. But anyway, that could be a, another problem. So PCV valve, MAF airflow sensor, oxygen sensor, you could have a leak in the hoses somewhere. Or in my case, you have the fuel pump not, not uh, being optimal, right? Because it was driving, things were fine, but it was just not getting enough fuel into the, into the engine and that's what caused the, the lean mixture, um, creating that P0171 error code. So um, all in all, you know, the, the fuel pump is about $150, again, from Rock Auto. If you get it somewhere else, it's probably going to be more. Um, but not a bad tune-up, really, for the m amount of time I spent on it, and then having that guy do that, which it's, you can probably find online a video of, of changing a fuel pump. It's not, it's not that involved, but he already had the car, and it was just easier for him to do it. So um, hopefully this helps, and um, 
I guess that's really it. And good luck. Thank you.